Well, of course, yes, you have a permit. The principle of free speech should extend to music making. We should encourage a multitude of voices, a culture of freedom of expression, but perhaps it's more useful to investigate the responsibilities which come with that freedom, responsibilities which the discerning pianist should at least contemplate while playing Bach. My own story is that I started out as a pianist and came to early instruments rather late. Following several intense years of specialization on the harpsichord and forte piano, I consciously decided to reintegrate the modern piano into my performing arsenal, using both instruments and music, new and old, to express my musical explorations. All of the following points are personal and based on my experience performing Bach in a wide variety of contexts. Given that I don't consider myself nearly as knowledgeable about the clavichord or organ as the harpsichord, for this video we'll limit it to the latter instrument. In an ideal world, most pianists would take the responsibility seriously to investigate the acoustical properties of the keyboard instruments which Bach used, and to assess how this knowledge impacts performance on modern instruments. I'd only like to focus on original works, so no Busoni list zelotti transcriptions, that's for another day. Before we get into details, let's hear from our special guest. I really think, frankly, that the piano does offer a great many resources which are entirely appropriate vis-a-vis -vis the music of Bach, and that it also offers some that are entirely inappropriate, so it really becomes a question of, um, I was going to say, using those things that enhance the music, but that's a bad word of using those things, or adopting those things, which really work within the parameters that the music itself observes. I think that's the safer way of putting it. So how can we use those resources to work within the parameters that the music itself observes? Let's concentrate on three parameters. pianos have phenomenally efficient damping. There is no extraneous resonance which is not controlled by the player. Harpsichords on the other hand have a kind of inbuilt resonance which the player cannot avoid engaging. So the goal is to try and control the resonance in different ways. Pedaling is the most obvious way in which resonance can be controlled on the piano versus the harpsichord. Due to the lengthy decay of the modern piano, along with the wash of overtones caused by cross-stringing, pedaling in Bach's music can all too easily produce a swamp of sound utterly foreign to Bach's domestic music. It should be used with extreme caution. However, when used with musical intelligence, the sustained pedal on the piano can add beautiful and often surprising layers to Bach's scores akin to a generous acoustic in a room or free dampers on a harpsichord, which can be understood as being faithful to the spirit of Bach's musical argument. We do need to talk about ornaments. An all too common solution for pianists in executing appropriate ornamentation is to leave it out entirely. To me this is a great pity as it would seem to significantly alter the character of the work. One needs to learn how to read, execute, and sometimes even add convincing ornamentation. The resonance on the piano will also alter how various ornaments can be executed. Details, yes, but important and rewarding details. Expressive playing is achieved through vastly different methods on the harpsichord than on the piano. The most obvious contrast is that of dynamic. It's perhaps a strange contention, but I draw a direct parallel between the kind of dynamic expressive playing that one does at the piano to the kind of expressive playing with timing that one does at the harpsichord. For example...
So to play the same passage, instead of using dynamic, I use timing. I can see that this is a matter of taste, but were I to use the same timing on the piano as the harpsichord, I fear that rather than an equivalence of expression, the result is somehow weaker. Similarly, in order to achieve a kind of driving effect on the harpsichord, if I were to play with the equivalent amount of rhythmical strictness which I would use on the piano, the result is utterly cold and machine-like. The wonderfully reassuring thing about all of this is that there isn't one correct answer. Each individual's knowledge, experience, talent and taste will determine the manifold ways in which we can approach performing the music of perhaps our tradition's greatest master. My solution is simply to perform in a way which I deem convincing for each instrument, which will necessarily be different according to the instrument. Playing Bach on the harpsichord produces very few philosophical concerns. Although not expressly idiomatic music, the expressive range of the score matches the expressive boundaries of the instrument almost perfectly. Whereas, playing Bach on the piano does raise questions about how to proceed. For me, it should sound like piano music, with all the colour, texture and dynamic associated with the piano. However, my accumulated experience as a harpsichordist serves as a filter. My pianism is entirely aware of all my harpsichordisms. My choices about which instrument to use often rely on a wider context, the rest of the program, the venue, the available instruments, etc. I don't have a single rule which fits each situation. These would be my conclusions. Learn and process the knowledge, gain experience, keep an open mind and retain flexibility in as many situations as possible. Thank you.